Every great basketball shooter and program has one major thing in common, the one-handed form shot. You get in close and you develop perfect shot fundamentals from the ground up, that way you can then build off of those fundamentals with more and more complex movements. And today I'm going to be teaching you the one-handed shot form of the aim training world. Breaking down the flick shot into four different isolated movements and giving you the aim training techniques needed to practice those movements in isolation. And then as always, I'm going to finish off with a daily routine that you can incorporate immediately to start developing your flick shot and become a better aimer. But for now, welcome back to Science Saturday. I'm Notorious Dub, certified personal trainer, strength and conditioning coach, and I have a minor in sports coaching from Auburn University and a long time high level FPS player. The best way to support me is to like, comment, subscribe, and watch the video all the way through. If you have any suggestions for next week's Science Saturday, make sure to leave those in the comments down below or come talk to me about it on Twitch, and thank you for being here. For this video, I'm going to start with those four aim training techniques, work into some overall tips and must-use settings for improvement immediately, and finish with a daily routine portion. Now let's start by dissecting the mechanic of flicking because if you watch my ultimate aim training guide, you know how much I stress isolating each individual portion of a skill. This helps break through and prevent plateaus, develop good fundamentals. That way you can focus on and master each individual component and make the endlessly complex skill of aiming into a series of simple movements that you can learn and master along the way. The four parts of the movement that I'm gonna break it down into are the flick, the micro correction, the click timing and or stopping the flick, and then the target acquisition. Let's start with the flick. Your arm is the primary mover responsible for getting your mouse over to where your target is close to your crosshair, or at least within your zone of control. At excessively high sensitivities, it can be mostly a wrist movement, but the goal for the arm is to reduce the flick error. And flick error is simply how far away your crosshair is from your target after your initial flick without any micro correction from your wrist at all. One key part of this is for your wrist and arm to work in tandem at the exact same time to create one synergistic movement. But just like you isolate your shot in basketball, you should have aim training as well so you can develop enough consistency in one segment of the movement so that the other segment becomes much easier to improve on because you can then isolate the feedback. So what's the point? What's the goal for isolating the movement? Well, it's to reduce the flick error to give your wrist an easier micro correction to make. All great basketball shooters work on the one handed form shot. It's a set shot with one hand, no legs, no offhand, all follow through. And this is about to be your one handed shot in aim training practice to reduce your flick error. Take your wrist and lock it in place. Work on your flick error by making flick shots, but with no micro correction from your wrist. Train that arm to be perfect. Keep this movement slow and controlled and make no mistakes. If you speed it up and begin to make mistakes, slow it back down. This is going to be a lifelong practice and something you should incorporate every day. But then that brings us to the second technique and the micro correction portion. Optimally, your flicks will be so perfect that you don't have to micro correct anymore. But no one's perfect, the micro correction is the tiny movements that happen in a small circle around your crosshair at the very end of the movement. It's the fine tuning of your crosshair placement towards your target. It's also vital for staying on target. People think tracking is a completely different beast, but for games like Marvel Rivals that everyone thinks is all tracking, it's actually mostly micro corrections that end up keeping you on target for long term. So what's going to be your form shot for micro corrections? Well we're going to do the same thing we did for the flick portion, but for the wrist. Head into your game of choice and lock that arm in place. Walk left to right, front, back, figure eight, but keep that crosshair on the target's head without moving your arm at all. Rely solely on your wrist, and the closer you get to the target with your movement, the more difficult it's going to be. So vary your range and stay as perfect as possible, because mastering this skill is the key to making your aim not only consistent, but transferable from game to game. Then it comes to click timing and or stopping the flick. I've heard a lot of people talk about the mechanic of flicking, breaking it apart into its components, but not exactly knowing how the end of the movement works. The end of the flick is called the amortization phase. It was popularized in the plyometrics field, but it basically covers the amount of time it takes for a muscle contraction to become a static hold and then redirect the energy into another contraction. That's too many words and too deep for this form of video. I just realized there was a gap in knowledge in the aim training community, so I wanted to get that out there. All we need to know is that muscles actually perform faster and more importantly, more efficiently and consistently while under load. So why does that matter to us? Well, in theory, the fact that muscles are more consistent when under load means that you should work on controlling the end of the movement because that's the portion that's actually under load and the beginning is you just creating the load. That way you can develop more consistency. It's the same principle as practicing your follow through in basketball. If you can end the movement the exact same way every time, you can isolate the problems on the front side, preventing plateaus and accelerating improvement. 
So for isolating and practicing click timing, it's nothing fancy, but you should be doing what I call dead stop flicks. Whenever you perform your flick, you want it to be as fast as possible without forcing errors, but in the movement as cleanly and quickly as possible with the same amount of tension on the mouse as you can. Practice this, create consistency on the back end so you can isolate and create consistency on the front end. And finally, we have target acquisition. This is the highlight reel skill, swapping from target to target and quickly and accurately identifying and moving to that target. It sounds simple, but it's difficult to map out your plan of attack while currently shooting at a target. Don't forget, multitasking is a myth. But not developing this skill is the reason that you find yourself in a situation with two enemies popping up on your screen and you shoot directly in the middle of both of them. It's an overload on your brain and you freeze up. It's something you have to develop actively to begin to perform in those scenarios. So how would you isolate this one? Target acquisition is the scaffold that comes after the click timing that we talked about earlier. But you wanna to begin to develop a sequence. And I mean this literally, load up into whatever practice range that you have and count out your targets. As many as you can manage, but I think two to three is just a fine number. Once you have it mapped out, flick and click on the heads in sequence. Simple as that. Practicing this will get your brain to start incorporating its working memory into your kill pathing which is very, very important for developing from a good player into a great player because it takes away a lot of the active brain power that you have to allocate. Now, before you skip through to the daily routine portion, remember, it's not practice that makes perfect. It's perfect practice that makes perfect. So how do you make your practice perfect? Form development should come over everything. Throughout these routines and practice techniques that I've given you, you have to focus on minimizing wasted movement. Here's a little anecdote about that for you. What do you think track and field coaches look for at meets when they're scouting kids to come to their college? The first thing the scout is going to notice, aside from an insane time on the clock, is how much the runner's head is bouncing up and down. Because the runner's goal is to move forward, and the more the runner's head goes up and down, the more wasted movement you can tell they have from the outside looking in. So you, as an athlete, need to eliminate your wasted movement and is developing something that's being dubbed in the aiming community as calm aim. It's a simple concept that's been around forever. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Running coaches even talk about this actually. The harder you try to run, the slower you're going to go. And your aim training should emulate that. You don't wanna focus on developing the fastest flicks in the land. There's a foundation that those flicks have to be built on. If you use an aim trainer, line trace and reflex medium flick are the absolute goats for this. You should live on these scenarios. And if you don't have an aim trainer, just emulate these in the practice range. Slow down your shot as much as you need to to be close to perfect. It's all about creating enough tension to have control over your movement, but being relaxed enough to not restrict your movement. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's your new motto. Now I would be leading you astray if I didn't get this out there. Your computer's performance does have a huge impact on your consistency in flicking. With a higher refresh rate, higher frames, lower latency, all making a huge difference in your time to kill. So let's go over some must do's very, very quickly. First of all, go into your monitor settings, right click, hit display and change your monitor to the highest refresh rate possible. Going from 60 to 144 is a huge difference and anything above that is just fine. Going higher than that is just big diminishing returns, but 60 to 144 is a huge difference. You want 144 Hertz. Also in every game, you wanna lower your graphic settings. That way you can pump up your FPS. Everything should be on low. And if the game has a texture setting, that's one that you're gonna to wanna to play around with. A lot of times that's what makes the enemies easier or harder to see. So that one's kind of worth it. Next, make sure V-Sync is off. V-Sync attempts to synchronize the frame rate of the game to the refresh rate of the monitor, which does reduce screen tearing, but it increases your input lag because the graphics card has to wait for the monitor to finish displaying a frame before sending another frame to it. Too long, didn't listen, just turn VSync off. You also wanna cap your in-game frame rate to three below your monitor's refresh rate. This provides you a very small buffer to prevent frame rate fluctuations and screen tearing and just gives you a little bit smoother gameplay. And finally, if you're not already doing this, every game that you play and want to compete in, put it in full screen mode. Borderless is fun, it lets you watch videos on your side monitor, freely tab in, tab out. Uh, but full screen gives the application full priority over your monitor and exclusive access. So you end up with much higher performance and much smoother gameplay because your computer no longer needs to render in the desktop background or any other background application. It just focuses on the application in full screen. And then whenever you actually tab out and it minimizes, then it'll render everything else in. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the daily routine for you to improve specifically on your flicking. It should be a focus on all four aspects of the flick, flicking, micro-correcting, click timing, and target acquisition individually, 
with a heavy focus on perfect form. Because remember, the entire point of this whole method is to build a solid foundation for your flicks to build upon and prevent running into plateaus in the future. And then we're gonna end your routine with an all-in-one program to bring all of the movements together in sync. Now keep in mind these tasks are revolved around Kovox because I do genuinely believe it's the best raw aim developer out there and it's worth the $10 price tag, but if you don't have it and you won't get it, just substitute what I suggested in the sections above or anything you can come up with to mimic the movements I'm about to show. The routine is very simple, easy to follow, 10 minutes of each section, followed by 20 minutes of putting it all together. And for flicking, I think the best of the best are either Tile Frenzy or Reflex Flick very easy. The key here is to lock that wrist in place and let your elbow slash shoulder do the majority of the movement. The goal is to reduce your flick error over time, and this exercise is going to feel crazy awkward at first, but by the end of even the first session, you'll notice significant improvement, and over time your flick error is going to decrease dramatically. For micro correcting, there is one GOAT overall, TAM Speed 2 BPES. Now this one naturally will be mostly wrist movement, but make sure you're locking that arm in place. The only thing we're focusing on here is creating fluid micro correction from the wrist. This is the consistency builder in aim training. And if you're not using Kovox, just set yourself up a distance from your target and walk unpredictably while keeping your crosshair on that target. For click timing, keep in mind that the goal is to stop the exact same way every single time. Similar tension on the mouse and a dead stop. We're developing consistency. And for me, the best routine is Jumbo Six Tile Frenzy. The targets are big, they're easy to hit, and stay on the screen statically so you can focus on progressing at your own pace. And outside of Kovox, find a target wherever you can and practice the dead stop flicks. Fast flicks to instantly no movement with the same tension on the mouse every single time. For target acquisition, it's simple. One wall, six target, pesu track. If I had to choose one task to play on Kovox to build the most transferable aim mechanics that make an obvious difference in gameplay, it's either Pesu Track or Pressure Aiming 10 targets. For Pesu Track, the goal is to move from target to target without downtime. Your brain needs to start developing focus on a target while being able to map out its next aim point. Once you've developed great aim, being able to multi-kill is the next hurdle to climb over. And finally, we bring everything all together with pressure aiming 10 targets. It's a very difficult scenario with arguably the most transferability of aim mechanics into real games. But if it is too difficult, you can swap it to pressure aiming 6 targets. But in my opinion, the flicks are a little bit too far apart in that scenario for what I'm trying to develop daily, even though it's an easier task. This is the scrimmage portion of your training where you're taking everything you're working on in your practice and turning it into game specific scenarios so all of your skills are primed and working together for max efficiency and ready to be transferred into your game. But that is about a 60 minute workout. If you need to you can cut those times in half that's no problem but if you do this one simple routine before you game and about an hour before you go to bed your improvement is going to go through the roof and you're going to say bye bye to plateaus. And this routine is pretty much exactly how I improved enough to hit top 400 in Valorant. Hopefully all of this helps, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have suggestions for the next Science Saturday, make sure you put that down there as well. The best way to support me is a like, a comment, and subscribing. I'm Notorious Dub, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for being here, and I'll see you guys next Saturday.